What's up guys, it's Matt from Cornelius Creations and in this video I'm going to show you how to power carve a perfect star into wood and show you a lot of techniques in this video. Let's get started. Now, believe it or not, I'm not showing you this video just for you to learn how to do this. The reason I'm showing you this video is because of the techniques you pick up along the way. Now, I'm hoping that you catch something in this video, and when I say catch, I mean this. I can teach you something, and you have to apply it and learn it, but when you catch something, you have it. Does that make sense? So things that you catch in life will stick with you a lot longer than things that are taught, even though they work hand in hand. So by the end of this video, I'm hoping that you catch something, that you will be able to take something here and apply to your own woodworking projects and that you have it. And that maybe you end up a month or a year or two years down the road with the techniques you're going to learn in this video. So with that being said, guys, hang with me through this video and I promise you will learn something. Let's get started. Now to get started, we need a rotary tool with a flex shaft attachment. If you guys have been watching my videos, you know I really like the Fordham. This is an industrial grade unit because I use it all the time. But if you guys have a Dremel with a flex shaft attachment, that works great. The second thing we need is a little block of wood. Now I recommend that you do not use any two by fours or any wood made with pine because it splinters real easy. And you need some type of template to put the star on. Now, if you guys haven't caught my other video on how to wood carve and power carve, click on the video here. And I'll also have another video of how to lay out templates using carbon transfer. So before you do this video and you haven't caught that video, be sure to watch that one because it's gonna make a lot more sense. Now, I'm not using the carbon transfer method. I'm just using a template that I cut out myself. So let's get started. Okay, I'm essentially using two bits, which I use all the time. That is just a round carbide burr. I'm gonna use a big one, and I'm gonna use a small one. You can find these in the Dremel brand or Fordham brand. And this one actually right here is a Bushk brand I bought off of eBay that's actually 30 years old, and it works excellent. <laughs> so you can find these everywhere if you look hard. The third one I'm gonna be using is a cone-shaped burr right here, and this is to do some of the background texture and roughing out. So these are the three essential burrs that you need. Even if you're new to power carving, I recommend picking these up right here. All of these can be picked up on Amazon. Okay, now we get to trace out the star right here. If you haven't caught my video on carbon transfers, be sure to do so. This is just a different way of doing it. Now, okay guys, there we go. You can see I slipped up right here, but that's all right because we're gonna thicken our edges. Now, one thing you guys always wanna do is always thicken your edges because if you don't, what if I got this tool right in here and I accidentally slipped over here, I wouldn't leave a lot of room to mess up. What I'm gonna do right here is just take this and just simply pencil in some areas and be very careful while I carve this. And while you do this, I'm going to tell you guys something. Nothing will ever be perfect for you. All you're doing is learning to cover up mistakes with other mistakes. And perfect doesn't mean without mistakes. It just means to the best of your ability. But with that being said, we do want it to look nice. Okay, guys, there we go. You can see it right there. So now we're going to get started power carving. Now, one thing to watch out for, guys, when you do this when you go down right here when you get to the corner this kind of fits but we don't want to do that because it will round out that corner we want the edges of the star to be nice and crisp right here so we're going to switch to our smaller burr so when we go down right here we're going to stop right about there and then pick up right here and another thing never start on the edge of a corner now here's a tip hear me here this will save you a lot of headaches i promise you because this doesn't get said a lot in videos actually i've never heard anyone say this Never start at a sharp corner right here. Always flip it around. So if I'm going to do this one right here, always follow your edges out. Don't try to go around your edges. You always want to follow your edges out. You see what I'm saying? Don't try to go around it because you will round the edge. I want everything sharp and crisp. You just want to go keep on going right there. So when you meet your edges, always keep on going straight. Does that make sense? Okay, like I said, we don't want to start at an edge. So you just go right here lightly pressing down in one direction and there we go 
If you guys got my other tutorial, remember while you're doing this, you always want to keep it one direction and, and keep it just going one way. Don't try to go back and forth because you're going to get a lot of divots in your wood. Just keep going in one direction. And when you get ready to smooth it out, kind of go in reverse very lightly. Don't try to dig in the wood and let the um, burr do the work for you. You see right there, I just made a mistake. I got it too far over, but that's all right because I have some real estate to work with. Now take everything you just learned and complete all the other sides with it. Okay guys, we got this pretty much roughed out. I am going to go back over it and smooth it out. Then we're switching to our other bit. Basically, you want all the negative space to just be equal in one area. We don't want different depths. We want all the same depth. So I'm going to have to go over here and correct some of my mistakes. Then we can get started on the other part. Okay, guys, we just finished this up. It's not perfect. I'm kind of rushing this for the sake of the video. But now we want to take our small burr and just go right in between here with it, right in the corners and get what we missed. And we want some nice crisp edges. So let's just go in right here. And looky there, we just took care of that edge right there. We're gonna come in at the angle right here. We're gonna turn. We're gonna grab the other angle and keep everything nice and crisp. There we go. Now we're going to do that for all the sides. Now you guys also want to use a small one on the edges here. Just like I said, run it, run it straight off. You see what I'm doing here? Turn it. Now do the same thing. Okay, there we go. The next thing we want to do is take our cone tip burr right here and go along the sides and flatten everything out. Now I'm going to go ahead and take out all the space around here because I want it to be real rustic looking. Okay, there we go guys, pretty smooth. I could have took my time with this and made it look just a tad bit better, but that's all right since we are going to texturize this. Now, just a tip for you guys, when you have your rotor rotary tool, to really rough it out, you wanna to go to the left because your rotary tool bit is spinning clockwise. So, when you rough it out, you go to your left. When you smooth out, you kinda of go to your right. They can work hand in hand, but after I rough an area out with this type of carbide bit right here, I'll always go back over it to the right and really rough it out. And you can see right there, I didn't do too good of a job, but when you come right here, you can see that it's roughed out pretty nice. I want this to be just very even and the same height. Okay guys, before we do the texture, I want to use a piece of sandpaper. Now here is where a lot of people go wrong at. They don't use sandpaper. Sandpaper works miracles, seriously. What we wanna do is just go over the piece. Now it's gonna scratch this up a little bit, but just lightly, not, this is about probably 120 grit. It's pretty rough. Okay guys, there we go. Okay, you can tell right here, I made a mistake that's a little too far out. So here's what I wanna do. We're gonna do this for all our sides. You have to be careful when doing this. Bend your sandpaper just like this and you want to run it along the edges but not too hard and be careful when you go in the corner not to rough it out and make it round i want this to be a sharp looking star now this right here should take care of a lot of the the non-straight areas because it should even everything out now catch this okay when i put this in i'm not going up straight straight flat or straight up and down i'm at an angle you see I have this put at an angle. Guys, this is a big tip. Hear me here at an angle, just like this. 
I promise you, it will straighten up your edges. Sandpaper works wonders. Because a lot of you guys would come in here with a rotary tool trying to fix this all and end up screwing it up even more because you slip. Sandpaper is the answer. I recommend Clean Spore Sandpaper from Clean Spores Woodworkingshop.com. Now look right here. Already fixed my blunder right there. I have a few more to fix. Oh yeah, look at what that did. That just straightened up my edges. Everything is looking pretty nice. Now let's do some texturing. Okay guys, to texture this, I'm gonna be using this burr right here from DuraGrit and they're absolutely excellent. I should have some reviews of the full set I got from them. But this right here is just like a a regular flat shaped burr and I'm going to use this to texture and you don't have to do this I usually do stippling but for this one I'm going to do it a little bit different and just put this feather lock texture into it let's go So I'm taking a small break here and letting my cameraman finish the texturing for me. He's pretty good at power carving too. Okay guys, we just finished up the texturing and it looks amazing. I really love the background. I'm fixing to come in here for the camera to see right here. Look at that. That's pretty cool. So the next thing we are gonna do is take this little flat brush right here and run it in between the grooves at a very low speed, probably around a thousand RPM. This helps clean up everything. The next step is to add some stain. I'm using two different types right here, a darker and a lighter. So what we wanna do is put the darker on our background to contrast the lighter up. Okay, I had to change brushes, that other one was not very good. Okay guys, I'm gonna have to be more careful. I've been messing up my stain bad over here, so I'm gonna really take my time with this and slow everything down. Okay, I'm putting some urethane on now. Give it a nice finish. I could have probably let this stain dry a little bit more, but I think it'd be all right. Okay, you can tell by my outfit, it's the next day. The urethane is done drying, and here is what it looks like. I think that turned out really good. And you can look right here, you may remember this from my other video, this project right here where I put the words love. And this star right here is going to change colors over time with this urethane. Give it about three or four more days and it's going to just get a little different shimmer to it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. As I said in the front of the video, I hope you caught something because when you catch something, you have it. So anyway, guys, you take care. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, hit thumbs down. That's cool too. And if you haven't done so already, hit subscribe and enable those notifications because I should have a lot more videos coming up. And you can check my links below for my Facebook, my Instagram, or if you would like to become a Patreon, I have the info down there. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you on the next one.